NIV have the audacity, they had the guts to take away 64,576 words from the Word of God. 64,000, write it down, 64,576 words from the Word of God. That is equal to removing the books of Ruth, Esther, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Lamentations, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nehum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Malachi, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude. So imagine all these books of the Bible removed. That's what NIV has done, the number, the amount of words they took away from the word of God. NIV removes major portions of at least 147 verses of the scripture. And I can go through all of them. But I'm going to give you just a few. Just a few. I hope you still have your Bible in front of you so we can go through this together. They will come. Let me explain to you what we're about to see. NIV will come to a whole verse of the Bible. A verse. They will take what they want. And then they will yank off the ones that does not agree with their satanic new age philosophy. They did this to about 147 verses of the Bible. I am so happy that this is not just hearsay. I've done the job for you. All you need to do is to confirm it by yourself. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6 verse 13. King James Bible is going to read it in full. He says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What did NIV remove from there? NIV removes, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Check your NIV. Do you see that there? Even with the revision they have done, latest revision, they still don't, they have not been able to, re, to bring this back. Even with the latest version, they have not been able to bring it back. This is still, is still out of NIV. Matthew chapter 15 verse 8, it says, These people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. If you have NIV, you will only see these people honoreth me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. That's all you find in NIV. First sentence here that says, These people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth. NIV removes it. Complete is gone. Check your Bible and see if I'm lying. Matthew chapter 19 verse 9. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. If you have an NIV Bible, you will not see, and whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. It's not in your NIV. Matthew chapter 20 verse 7, they say unto him, because no man hath hired us, he say unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. If you have NIV Bible, you will not see, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Remove, yank. Matthew chapter 20 verse 16, so the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. If you have NIV Bible, you will not see from many be called, but few chosen. It's not in NIV. Powerful scripture. For many, we even use it. We talk about it every day. For many are called, but few are chosen. It's not in your NIV Bible. Matthew chapter 20 verse 22. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? 
and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. They say unto him, We are able. If you have NIV, you will never see and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. It's not there. Check it. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. NIV removed wherein the Son of Man cometh. These people are demonic. How can you go to a scripture like this and say, Watch therefore, for you know not the hour. The hour for what? That's what you have in NIV. And they use their own weakened technology terminology to write it the hour for what the hour wherein the son of man cometh they don't want you to know that Christ is coming from heaven because remember they've already disconnected him from heaven they've made him the biological son of Joseph don't want him to have any connection to God the father to say that he is the only begotten son because if they allow this to remain wherein the son of God or the son of man cometh it will mean that they are now associating him with God the father it means that they are associating him with the God in heaven that means he's coming from heaven but they don't want that to happen because they've already started from beginning. This is the work of Mullencott and her peers. Satanic people revising the Bible, the word of God, to suit their one world religion. I told you when the one world religion is fully formed, it's NIV they are going to have as their Bible. You will see. Just like CNN is going to be their number one mouthpiece. It's a shame. Wherein the Son of Man cometh, you remove it from the Bible. Go to Matthew chapter 27, verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. NIV removed that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them and upon my vesture did they cut. NIV removed it because if they let it stay, it will connect Christ to a prophecy of the old times. They want Jesus to be like just ordinary guy that the two parents just met together and gave birth to. They don't want to associate him with prophecies of the old. Because this was Isaiah, this was prophesied then. They don't want to associate him with that. Because none of their other expected messiahs or gods that they worship was prophesied to come and they came. Our Christ, there were prophecies about his coming and he came. Even the things that will happen to him were prophesied in the Old Testament and they happened. As these people don't want to do that. They removed such a long passage. Go to Mark chapter 6 verse 11. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you, when ye depart thence, Shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. NIV removed, verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment and for that city. Do you have any doubt why they removed it? Are you in doubt? If you have followed up, up to this point, you shouldn't be in doubt. You see, Sodom is there. Sodom and Gomorrah. They don't want that. These people are homosexual, apologists, satanic worshippers. They gave you a Bible. You're flagging it all over the place. Check your Bible in NIV. See what that is. If it's dead, just point it out. Tell me. You will not see, verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in, that, in the day of judgment than for that city. Go to Mark chapter 10 verse 21. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, 
and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. NIV removed, take up the cross. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> Luke chapter 1 verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. NIV removed, blessed art thou among women. Is it in your NIV Bible? Go check it in KJV, you see there. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You should already know what NIV removed from there, right? NIV removed bed by every word of God. Such a popular scripture. Bed by every word of God yanked away from NIV. Luke chapter 4 verse 8. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou serve. Guess what NIV removed? Get thee behind me, Satan. And I will remove thee. Because that's their father. That's their Lord. The new age people, it's actually Satan that they worship. This is it. Get thee behind me, Satan. It's very insulting. So NIV removed it. It's not there. Check. Is it in your Bible? Check it. If you have NIV, check. Do you see there? That's what the Bible says. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. This is why the church has become so lukewarm. That's the apostasy the Bible talked about when we discussed the six seals of Revelation. Apostasy, the falling away. See how they set the ball rolling for you. See how they laid the foundation for a massive falling away from the true religion, from reality, from original texts of the scriptures. How can you read all these Bibles and still be a proper Christian? Get thee behind me, Satan. Removed. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted or oh, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. NIV removed. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. It's not in an IV. Luke chapter 11, verses 2 to 4. Our which art in thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth, but deliver us from evil. Remove from NIV. John chapter 1, verse 27. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. NIV removed is preferred before me. John chapter 3, verse 13. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. NIV removed which is in heaven. You see the attack on heaven. You see it is following. They are just maintaining it. Flowing the same way. John chapter 3, verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. NIV removed should not perish. A Bible. John chapter 11 verse 41. From the place where the dead was laid, NIV removed it. John chapter 16 verse 16. Because I go to the Father, NIV removed it. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 10, verse 6. He lodged with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. NIV removed, he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Acts 15, 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. NIV removed, known unto God are all his works. Acts of the Apostle chapter 20, verse 24. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And I will remove, but none of these things move me. 
Acts 23, 9, and there arose a great cry, and the scribes that were of the Pharisees part arose and strove, saying, We find no evil in this man, but if a spirit or an angel had spoken to him, let us not fight against God. NIV removed, let us not fight against God. Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, which walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Can I read it again for you? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, okay, who do what? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. NIV removed, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit because they want to maintain the satanic theology they have polluted the church of God with which is that once you are saved you are forever saved that message is from the pit of hell is from the new age movement the message you see today circulating all over around the body of Christ if that is not true look at what the, that's why they removed it and they removed it from most of all the other versions and flooded the church of God with this satanic Bible. Why did they remove who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit? Because this Romans chapter 8 verse 1 is a clear proof to you that any person, that even people who are in Christ can actually walk after the flesh. Look what the Bible says. Let us read. This, this is one of the most powerful one of the most powerful scriptures you would ever read if you want to tell people that you can lose your salvation. This is the scripture that will challenge that satanic philosophy that once you are saved, you are forever saved. The Bible said there is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. If you have an NIV, when I'm telling you that you can lose your salvation, you will not believe me because it ends there. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And you say, what is this man talking about? Look at it in the Bible. But he won't know they've removed the other part of that verse that says, who walk not after the flesh? Meaning that you are in Christ, there is no condemnation for you who is in Christ, who is not walking after the flesh, but who walk after the Spirit. First of all, the Bible has established here that somebody who is in Christ can actually walk after the flesh and condemnation will come to you. But if you are in Christ and you walk after the Spirit, there is no condemnation for you. You are the one the scripture is referring to in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. That's why he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And then he described who he's talking about. Who walk not, but who walk in. Who walk not after the flesh, but who walk after the Spirit. Two different people. People who are in Christ, walking after the flesh, condemnation comes to them. If you are in Christ, walking after the Spirit of God, you will not have any condemnation. And this goes straight to what we said, what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, right? Where it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, which I have told you about before. If you're carrying NIV up and down, what I'm saying will not make sense to you. Pick up your King James Bible. They've removed the word of God to deceive many. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Bam, they ended there. So when somebody picks it up, he say, why is Joseph Okechuku telling me that uh, I'm in Christ Jesus and I will still go to hell? Why? Because there are people in Christ, they've removed what comes after that. Who are in Christ Jesus, which walk not after the flesh, but which walk after the spirit. Who is the spirit? The same spirit they say, do not grieve him. Is the Bible they used to destroy the church of God. Romans chapter 8, 13 verse 9. Romans 13, 9. For these thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, love thy neighbor as thyself. NIV removed, thou shalt not bear false witness. 
because that's exactly what their Bible is doing, bearing false witness. They took it out. <laughs> Ross Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. NIV removed and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Take, eat, broken, all these words removed from that verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. NIV removed, but mighty through God. Check it. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who had bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you. NIV removed that you should not obey the truth. Why? You already know. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. And I will removed of his flesh and of his bones because they've already made him out to be just a normal, regular person. He cannot beget you as a Christian because he was just born like every one of us. Philippians chapter 3 verse 16. Nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. And I will remove, let us mind the same thing. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such, withdraw thyself. NIV removed from such, withdraw thyself. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 21. For those priests were made without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. NIV removed after the order of Melchizedek. That makes a complete nonsense of that verse. You see how they are leaving people confused about the word of God. About the word of God. First Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. NIV removed through the Spirit. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. NIV removed on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. They removed it. 1 John chapter 4 verse 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Remember when I quoted this? The spirit of the Antichrist, you heard that it will come, but is already in the world. What NIV took away from here is, Christ is come in the flesh. Look, and every spirit that confesseth now that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, NIV removed Christ is come in the flesh. Because he's just a normal human being that two parents get together and give birth to. You see how consistent they are in their wickedness, in their perversion, in their lies, in their deception. Very consistent. When you have people like Mullencott, what do you expect? 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You know what NIV will remove there? That ye may believe on the name of the Son of God, of course. Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. 
saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I be removed, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. They took it away. Revelation chapter 5 verse 14, And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And I be removed him that liveth forever and ever. Revelation 14 5, And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I be removed before the throne of God. Consistent manipulation. Of the truth. Revelation 21 24, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and I be removed of them which are saved. Very consistent in the satanic perversion of the word of God. Having seen all of this. Are you still confused about why the Church of God suddenly became hopelessly lukewarm? Bereft of any knowledge of what God expects from us as believers. This is where the journey began. So you see a Christian, very zealous, wants to read the Word of God. He goes there, he buys NIV or the Message Bible and begins to chew on it, chew on it, chew on it. And everything they're reading is complete trash sending them further and further and further away from God rather than drawing closer drawing them closer to God this is the apostasy the spirit of the Antichrist you heard of that is already that is when the, the when that horse white horse rode in False prophets, false teachers would never have thrived in our world if these kinds of scriptures, if these kinds of Bibles were not there. They would never have thrived. They never, never would they have thrived. So they had to provide them with these manuals so that they can use it to deceive the many. NIV is a huge satanic manuscript and unrepentantly so I plead with you today we're going to continue with this there's another one called the passion translation hopefully with time you know these things are not easy to put together with time I will try and do that one too with other ones that I plead with you Whatever it takes, get back to your King James Version. If you can't understand anything, put the word in a Google search or anywhere, search the meaning of it. See, I don't believe even the New King James Version, even though I quote it sometimes. The New King James has been perverted slightly at some point. But if you ask me, I would say maybe if you can afford it, you have the normal old King James, you can have a new King James by your side, but make sure that whatever you read there, that you also read it in the old one to verify what they're saying. But of the other translations, I still have not been able to see one that I can recommend to you. Maybe by the time we're done with the entire series, I'll be able to recommend any simpler thing, but I don't, I can only tell you right now, just focus on your King James Bible. And probably use it alongside the new King James, but with a lot of carefulness. Study the Bible. King James is not that difficult. I know there are some things that are quite heavy there, but it's not that difficult if you compare to all the trash that we have just seen. Like a mangled hippo. Faces. Look at even the other one that calls itself the Message Bible. That, I mean, just, just think about these things. The King James is still our best option. You want to read your Bible with understanding? You have your phone by your side, Android phone. Especially if you are in this new generation. 
you have you stand a better chance if you're watching this it means that you have access to the internet hmm? go to the internet a particular verse you don't understand google it just type that verse and say explained you will see many ideas you will see people compare all the ones you're seeing the spirit of god will tell you no this is the one this is what it is because you're going to see some confusing things as well and the spirit of god will tell you this is the right one and you're going to use the what the bible is saying there will not the context of what you're reading will help you to know which one is right and which is wrong that's how i'm able to know most of the things i know even though i go way beyond you can study the bible with full understanding don't ever allow niv bible the so-called passion translate and then the message please send this message to all over the world satanic bible niv that's what it's meant for it's a new world order bible it's a one world religion bible let's throw them away and send the church of christ back to the bible I love that title, Back to the Bible. Going back to the Bible is going back to the King James Bible. The King James is not in any way completely 100%, you know, like it has everything. As for the text that it has, all of them are solid. But it's not like all the texts are there. But as for now, as far as I'm concerned, the King James Bible is to the rescue. Go get a King James Bible, read it with your family, read it by yourself, and find out the truth of God. You see how they yanked off all the things that would buttress the fact that we preach every day? So when you preach, the people will carry their own Bible and look at it and say, this man, I don't know what he's talking about. May God help us. Thank you so much. I hope that by the grace of God, I have been able to prove to you that these scriptures are not from God. These are letters from Satan. They work at the word of God. The Bible says do not take away, but they have taken away. You know, that is the work of the devil. He likes to take away. He wants to deceive as many people as possible. Don't let him deceive you. Enough is enough. I love you with all my heart and I will always want to say again, thank you to those of you who are helping us, who are supporting us, who are donating and giving to our cause. I have said it over and over again, you guys are the best. Like I said in my previous video, we have hit $8,000, $130,000 to go. I know deep down in my spirit that my God is faithful and we're going to raise that money. It is such an emergency right now that we have to have alternative platforms where we can share things and speak the truth to the body of Christ and prepare them for the soon coming king because nothing is going to be the same ever again. We are getting there. So thank you so much for giving. May the Lord bless you, reward you, replenish you, increase you on every side. And if you have not given or if you feel like you want to give more, please do. We have to get to that target. And mark my words, I have given you my word we are going to have a new family and we're going to call the bluff of these tech giants that are messing around with the word of God. I love you with all my heart and I can't wait to share many more truths with you soon. God bless you.